Let's talk about the man with more recurring Trek roles than any other, Jeffrey Combs, on this edition of... Yeah, it's the best, but worst, but no one of me. Yeah, it's the best, but worst, but Trek's ever seen. Starting in DS9, Jeffrey Combs has played some of the Star Trek franchise's most iconic recurring characters. I don't think you can call any appearance by this master actor bad, so the worst entries here are based purely on nitpicks about the characters themselves as written. Because there's no way you can fault Mr. Combs for anything he's ever done in Trek. As usual, starting at the fifth worst. Short and sweet. The one time Jeff could have literally phoned in his performance comes at the end of one of Lower Deck's most questionable episodes, as Peanut Hamper finds themselves in the Daystrom Institute stored next to the previously seen Agamus. This seems to be setting up some epic Combs action in a future season, but as is, it's the Man of the Hour's shortest appearance in the franchise, and that makes for an entry here. Number four. Act of War. Just an episode ahead of the Dominion actually taking over the station during the events of In the Cards, Wayun takes Jake Sisko and Nog prisoner. This is a pretty bold move with tensions already high to capture the son of a notable Starfleet captain and a cadet on their first posting. I mean, it's just a misunderstanding, and in the end, Jake and Nog aren't going to report what happens. But just this act could have started the war right then and there before Starfleet could have ever put up the minefield and could have completely changed the course of the war. While tactically this would have strengthened the Dominion's hold, Wei Yun doesn't know that at this point. He's just running a gamble that ends up paying off for all involved. Number 3. Cutthroat Business Taking the meaning of this entry literally, Brunt shows the lengths he'll go to to ruin Quark, including trapping him in a Ferengi contract to deliver his dead body, or forfeit his status in Ferengi society and lose his Ferengi business license and all his assets. After nearly letting Garrick kill him covertly, he gives in to Brunt, but Quark was right at the beginning. They're not Klingons. There's always a deal to be made for a Ferengi, and this is not Brunt's finest moment. Number two, torture. Because this entry is for Shran taking Saval from Enterprise during Kirshara to strap him into a Bond villain torture machine to attempt to confirm what he's saying about the Vulcans attempting a surprise first strike on Andoria. While there is some great back and forth in this scene, it really feels unnecessary and like Shran's just trying to assert dominance by the end of it. The Shran we've seen to this point has been stern but empathetic, and almost feels out of character for him to go on with the torture scene, which is likely an analogy to the time of the show's release and public debate about the ethics of things like advanced interrogation techniques. Finally, the worst Jeffrey Combs has ever done in Star Trek, overshadowed. In his only appearance in Voyager, he's upstaged so hard by the 32nd appearance of The Rock, I personally didn't know till years later this was Jeffrey Combs. Hertzler sticks out like a sore thumb, and as we've said before, there is no bad acting by Mr. Combs, and his acting even allowed him to seamlessly blend into the background, despite being the man in charge of a multi-sector fighting, gambling, and enslavement ring. But that's just it. A character of this kind of weight being overshadowed so hard unfortunately lands the entire role of Pank in Sunkatsi to the worst appearance of Jeffrey Combs in the franchise. As we open a wormhole of possibilities to the best of Jeffrey Combs, if you're enjoying the content, please consider a like and subscribe. Number 5. Trading Favors through the run of Enterprise, Archer and Shran are constantly trading favors even if Jonathan doesn't see it that way. In Zero Hour, our favorite antennae-wielding version of Jeffrey Combs shows up just in time for the battle with the Zindi weapon and plays a considerable role during the battle to decide the fate of Earth. While a little cliché, Mr. Combs' level of enthusiasm here helps cement this season finale as one of the best in the franchise. 
Number 4. Union Buster. During the events of DS9's Bar Association, we get a look at Brunt. FCA, the liquidator from hell that shows up to do battle with Quark's employees threatening to unionize in search of better benefits. Though it goes against everything Ferengi stand for at this point in the timeline. While his actions bringing Nausicaan thugs in to help break up the talks of a union are questionable, this appearance of the character cements him as one of the most interesting and memorable across Trek. Number 3. Double dipping. I really hope Mr. Combs got two checks for his work in DS9's penultimate episode, Dogs of War, as he plays both Wei Yun and our favorite FCA liquidator. While Wei Yun is pretty normal, in Brunt's final appearance, he's almost a completely different person. After a lifetime of forcing Ferengi rules in a narrow, misogynistic way on its society, he sees the political winds blowing the other way with the introduction of women's rights and taxes on Ferenginar, and shows rule of acquisition number 33 in action. It never hurts to suck up to the boss. Still waiting on a Lower Decks episode where all the characters are voiced by Jeffrey Combs. But until then, this double feature will have to do. Number 2. The Many Faces of Combs Above and beyond the many faces donned by Mr. Combs, Wayun is a character that you don't know if he's about to praise you or have you shot by the Jem'Hadar. No scene encapsulates this more than Wayun going from bubbly to quietly terrifying and back again within a conversation with Nerys in favor of the bold. It starts and ends with the pleasantries of Wayun trying to understand aesthetics in Zial's art. In between, he laments the things he doesn't have and masterfully lays out Rom's fate in no uncertain terms. The number one performance from our friend Jeff. Doing the right thing. In one he'll end up owing Archer, he has to side with the pink skin over his own trusted subordinate, Susie the Blue. It's the meeting of probably the best performance by Jeffrey Combs and had the most impact on one of his recurring characters. While overall, Enterprise's ceasefire is only a middle-of-the-road standard fair track episode, having to make the choices Shran did at the end cement this as our favorite Jeffrey Combs moment. What's your favorite appearance of Jeffrey Combs in the franchise?